Hopefully you all appreciate some Alice in Chains. That's somebody doing a cover of it, of course. It doesn't quite sound like it, but it sounds good. It's been slowed down, too. But, uh, and there are two different forms of that. There's the radio safe form, and then that one. The radio safe form says, Buried in my pit. And uh, here we're looking at a red ochre burial. Uh, something that I've shown in the last couple of years a few times we went through this but goes all the way back to Cro-Magnon burials and stuff strongly all the way through from this point backwards it seems like at Egypt things changed for these people in this area here and for actually a lot of the people all over the planet somewhat but it still has this symbology that you can see to this day in a certain way and in a certain form. Now here, make note of a few things before we go into the article here, that what we're looking at is a uh, built square pit. So a box, and we see a man in a box. This man in a box has a lot of things with him that's in there, but one thing that you can see right off the bat is that it is swathed in red ochre. And that red ochre situation is even on the edges of it and stuff all around and all over the body. It's in a north-south oriented situation facing to the east on its side. And we've seen this a lot of times before. In fact, at least five different places that we've looked at, there are people that have this same symbology in their early burials. And it spans quite a length of time. In here we also, I don't know where my point is at. Let me see, do I have a pen or something over here? Um... Over here we also see all of his jars that he has with him, and they seem to be somewhat uniform. Guess I can use a pen. And if you look at them, they're extremely uniform and round. I know the edge of this is chipped off somewhat, but uh, look at the size of these guys and everything. And we'll look at those again. And uh, here's a giant jug, and then there's uh, here's a board put in between there and stuff. And then this plate that is extremely well made. You can look at it from the side here. We'll be looking kind of down at it in the next video. And smaller jugs and larger jugs. An extra pit has been formed here, and the whole thing lays out. And we've talked about before how this lays out as a primordial womb situation. And uh, you're not to be coy uh, somewhat about the situation, but uh, a, a woman's area or the matrix of the womb is quite often referred to as a a box and it even works with sacred geometry which I've shown recently and I'm about to go into a whole tirade on it and how that works together too somewhat in this ideal but this and its aspects are carried in through Egypt it doesn't all get lost for this facing to the east and looking for the next day's Sun to come back up tomorrow like you're just sleeping like he's just sleeping like we have in coffins today and he looks like he's just sleeping well I sleep more like this a little bit in fact I twist and turn and flip over and stuff so you better give me a box a little bit bigger like this if that's the effect but he's just sleeping and he's gonna wake up tomorrow whenever the sunlight hits his face and for the book of the dead is actually flip that around a little bit it's the book of coming forth by day everything here is swathed in red ochre pretty much and we'll look at these artifacts a little bit closer here in just a minute so let's get into this article you can see the the pointer that's here and a lot of times there's six inches of solid and then broken up in inches and stuff and this is in six inch increments and two and a half foot or whatever things like that right so they found this huge pre-dynastic burial ground that's been found in Egypt. And it's in the northern Egypt, part of Egypt. It's a ma major burial ground has been found with 83 graves so far. has been uncovered by archaeologists. 
The majority of the Greys date back to the era before it was a unified kingdom ruled by the pharaohs. The find is helping researchers to understand cultures that were older than the pyramids and that possibly helped to lay out the foundations for the Egyptian Old Kingdom from 2575-2150 and this is during the time of building the pyramids. I recently did a video on uh, Himwenu and who was the architect of the Great Pyramid and showed some very revealing photos along with that too. Hopefully uh, you, I won't have to do that in this one. But we might if we have a few extra minutes at the end, huh? A team of archaeologists working under the auspices of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, a government body, discovered the graves. Egypt, independent, quotes a statement from the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities that they were found during archaeological excavations in the Qom el Kiljan region of Ilps Dahagla Government, which is southeast of Alexandria, and it's out in the delta a little bit in the area where it spans out. And so what you're looking at here is part of the area that's been excavated out full square down to the level. And they found that at the level that they're at right here, that they're finding pits, even in houses buried under foundations of bodies that are around here. And each one of these circles here has a body into it and connected pits that are right here and connected pits that are right here, which is kind of unique and hopefully they'll be able to get the genetics out of them to see well connected pits is this mother father thing is this husband and wife what is going on and the only uh last year i made a mention of this and said well i'm waiting for it to come out well this is the first, art first article that comes out apparently and it's from end of february this year first time i'm getting to it and i'm hoping by the time i do this now that shortly after there'll be more information and of course it takes about that long for genetics to go and everything so woohoo it also looks there's a very big burnt pit in here and in that description in the other one they talked about having somewhat of a communal barbecue pit type thing they had found and then hearths and all these situations inside of houses pottery and all these things and stuff and I go ooh so we're gonna get a carbon dating and all that type stuff so let's see what we can see and, of course, that isn't oriented the same as this house is, but it's definitely square as hell this house is here, right? And it's got that little niched architecture a little bit on the outside of it, too, and its foundations. And you can see that there's one buried under the floorboard, and it looks smaller. It may have been a family member that died but then you can also see someone buried here, somebody buried here, somebody buried here, directly under a foundation. And uh, so it's uh, in the area that they refer to as Buto, which is kind of famous, and anybody that's studied it will know about that. It's the ancient culture of the Nile area that's down towards the Delta what we would call Lower Egypt because Upper Egypt is, you know, the water's running downhill and so that's more. Upper Egypt is to run more south. Archaeologists found graves from at least three different periods in Egyptian history. RM Online quotes Mustafa Waziri of the Supreme Council of Antiquities as saying the majority of the graves date back to the first half of the fourth millennium BC. Known in the as the age is the civilization of Buto. This little known society was based around a city of the same name that was located in the Lyle Delta. Buto culture was also known as Lower Egyptian, is believed to have been enormously influential in the later development of the Old Kingdom. And of course they uh, were whenever they put it all together, for they were the people that had a large part portion of the farmlands but also the merchant and all connections to the entire Mediterranean the North African Caucasians that are all around there and Phoenicians what we call that now Carthage and all that but also leading out of there <coughs> for there this is kind of down left of where the Nile would come straight out of it but to go out right is leading into the Middle East and so on but this is also looked as being somewhat of a port city in some ways 
Oh, that isn't the picture. Oh, good. I was going to say the thing that's not showing up there isn't the picture of the close-ups, is it? Because that's what's right here. Butoh graves are oval pits inside which are burials designed in a squatting position rather than sleeping position according to the Egypt dependent. Although we just saw one right there in the sleeping position. But apparently they found a few of them too. A number of handmade ceramic funerary items such as bowls and jars were found buried with the skeletons in the grave. These have also been found in many other graves from ancient Egypt. And so you can look at some of this finely made pottery here. And what's strange is if you look in, and study all the cultures that they have found that they put at about the same time, there's a couple of cases where they've shown these people don't make very good pottery, and all these other people are making incredibly good pottery. And uh, one archaeologist came out and said, I think what we found was something more like uh, making kind of a joke, but it could be the more reality of the situation that he found the pottery school for out by that was just so much shattered pottery and it didn't seem like it was attached to them you know doing that pottery sacrifice for anybody and stuff like they had done for others but then attached to the people that do better pottery that looks like this type of quality here there's also stone made versions of these things so I want y'all to think on a level of people back at this time. You'd think, okay, well, it's pretty good pottery there. And then some people are pulling off this stuff. It's like, damn, that's some good pottery there. And it's all uniform. And it pretty much have to be done on a lathe or a pottery wheel, which they aren't credited of having at this time. But then all of a sudden, they've got these jugs that are made out of stone that look just like this. Like, uh, yeah, okay, so you can take some clay and do it around and do this type thing. How about you make one out of stone? And the coolest thing to me is that it's that blended granite in different chunks of colors and stuff, which makes it in infinitely harder. And it seems to be so simple. There are people who have come up with different ideas. I tried to come up with one for one of my D&D campaign things that these people had kept these jugs for thousands of years. And they wash them every day a couple of times and you put sand in them and stir it around and do all these things. And over time, it had got them to the point that they were now. But it doesn't work that way really either, does it? Anyhow, so looking at this pottery, you can see that there's a few different sizes. But then these are all uniform somewhat. I know this is a lip that's a little smaller than, say, this one or this one, which are about the same. But the rest of them are the same. And... Uh, they seem to have a almost perfect circle lift that are onto them. And if you look at these, it looks like something that would be done on a potter's wheel as it's worse as adverse to somebody just handing it, you know, and doing it by the hand around that. Uh, and uh, whenever they show you that sub quality par pottery that they show, it shows that they kind of make it out of ropes of it and put it all together and then try to make it look like this like they're trying to mimic somebody other people's pottery. And of course this may be during trade where they're not necessarily a, a pottery people, but they're this or that, so in trading they do so, and they maybe turn around and go, okay, well, F that, let's start making our own pottery. And this may be the first burgeonings of that, and a pottery school, if you will, things like that. You know, you, there's a lot of different aspects you could see, things like that. But then there's almost a perfect little will of what looks like some of that gray granite type and then there's this plate that's here that looks you know it's a almost a perfect rectangle and it's thin as hell and yet not cracked and it never broke and it was buried and it looks like you know that one guy had that piece that was maybe half this long and not quite as wide it was in front of his face but now we're looking at one that's bigger like this and that's a whole nother level. This isn't some piece of pottery made out of clay, but this is made out of a granite type situation. And it's been shaved down to the point that it's less than a half inch thick. It never cracked. It never did anything. And they've got it down to where it is smooth. Also, another conspicuous looking weird thing that doesn't quite fit with the time of the way they try to tell us about is this perfectly made bowl and if you look at it it is a perfect circle and made and it looks like it would have been made on a potter's wheel 
by somebody that's pretty damn good at it. And if you say somebody did this without even a potter's wheel, they'd be like, whoa, they're pretty damn, now, oh my gosh. And perhaps they did it and then shaved it down and did things, but in, in that same breath, if they did shave this down and stuff, it, it, it kind of doesn't show. But also, look how these things have all been swathed in red ochre. Seems except for this guy right here. So it shows you the bisque form when they cook this pottery turns out to be white. But quite often, are they putting it in with it when they make it, or are they swathe it with it? Well, when you see that it chips off of it, like here, that it's only a coating, and it's quite a coating. It's almost dipped in paint, right? Quite thickly painted over the whole thing. Ceramics found in some of the graves. So, three of the graves date back to 3200 BC and are from the Nakata II civilization. This is also known as the Proto-Dynastic Period and it was crucial in laying the foundation for ancient Egypt. Coming out of that we have what's now had to have been formed is called Dynasty Zero because they found all these things that go with that too. So they refer to this as Dynasty Zero and then it comes into the very first dynasties. It's very important in the development of the state institutions in Egypt before the kingdom was unified about 2686 BC according to the legend by the Pharaoh Menes. And I'm about to do a video about that <clears throat> and the legend of Menes, Narmer, and the first origins. Again, it's kind of a, an extra add-on to the last one I did last year. And last year I did one about pre-dynastic Egyptians and the forming of Egypt and worked off of a couple of different archaeologists and how they were explaining there was a lot of Sumerian connections. Like whenever you cut one of those cylinder seals out, well, whenever you cut out a plug out of these Egyptian things and pop it out, what do you do with that plug? I don't know, but they end up in Sumeria and then carved out and they have these cylinder seals on them. Also over here, you end up finding in the very first dynasties a master of the beast idea. And some of these burials that are here, they plaster around the inside of it and do a painting job onto it, which looks like Sumerian reed boats with Egyptians and so on going on. And there's a one that was very conspicuous that some guy deciphered saying, this must be the Mar Narmer moment, or if it not the Narmer moment, it's the moment whenever the people came here that turned into the people that Narmer momented, if you will. And uh, whenever they dated, it says, well, it's questionable whether it's exactly that moment or maybe even pre to it. Just like Ginger, the blonde-haired pre-dynastic mummy that they find, that could have been somebody who died during the conflicts that led up to the unification of Egypt. In the burials that date from the Nakata II or the Nakata III, the archaeologists found skeletons that were also in a squatting position and were surrounded by funerary objects. And by squatting position, I think they're talking about fetal position because that's what we were looking at before. For there are squatted position burials too, and then there are squatted mummies and stuff, like the Wari mummies that have the red and blonde hair that you find in the Andes and stuff, and they're just in this squatted, almost a Buddha position, like there's some Buddhas and people that are over there that are buried in that way. And it makes me think, you know, is this a shaman buried in that way, or are they misconstruing the idea of fetal position with squatting? Two clay coffins were discovered as well inside the second group of graves, according to Ayman Aishawi, head of the Egyptian antiquity sector, reports Egypt Independent. This type of coffin from the Nakata III period have not been found previously in the region, so this is of the earliest of that going on with that extra set in coffin that you saw there that was swathed in red ochre. Archaeologists also found the three tombs coal bowls that contain the eyeliner. This is what they make their eyeliner out of that helps reflect the sun and do the things. And so that was definitely going on back then. But they kind of already knew that. Oyster shells were also uncovered at the burial ground. And oyster shells and shells quite often go with these people. It makes you wonder if they have an affinity with uh, the sea. But, you know, you can also think of things. When I was a kid and you look at a shell and it's got that abalone effect in it and everything else too. That's something magical, if you will. 
and so there's probably a lot to do along with that. Also, oyster shells were cracked and used around making fake eyes that they did a lot of times, but if you look at those crystal blue eyes that they have, that's actually a granite that they found that's white with little pink flecks in it, and by making the eyes out of that, it looks just like a human eye with the veins in it, and then they somehow found that clear crystal and made those eye lenses and attached them to that. I've showed them a few times in my videos recently. I just look up crystal blue-eyed Egyptians, it'll, it'll show it. Um, so oyster shells too found in it. And uh, so here's another burial here, and I think this is the one they described as sitting up, which it doesn't look sitting up, it looks like he's definitely in a fetal position, and in fact not as big of a bowl that he's buried in and of course it's there's no box that's there but uh so it also looks like by the gauging here that that would have been a smaller human perhaps somebody's not fully mature what does it say here burial stating Nakata three period were buried in squatting position so see man i don't know i'm confused if they found some that they really think were sitting up and maybe collapsed or if or if they're saying well yeah because I can kind of make out the back and the leg and the knee and back down to the feet and how he's all kind of tightened up into this primordial womb. And again, you can see red ochre all over this one here too, but maybe not swathed as much as the other guy. And I don't see any artifacts, but they may have already pulled them out, right? The burials are helping experts to better understand the history of Lower Egypt before the emergence of the Old Kingdom. Egypt Independent reports Waziri stating that the site must have witnessed heavy human activity during the eras of Nakata III and Bhutto. It also shows the similarities and differences between the two pre-dynastic cultures' funerary practices. And so there's a little difference going on with these funerary practices and some things going on, and they haven't gotten quite down to the fact of realizing that some of these people had some gods and this going on, and some of these people had some gods and that going on, and they put it together, A and B, and came up with C, but C was the better component, adding them all three together, and then it actually expounds from there. And uh, Egypt is not a static thing from the pre-dynastic on, for it goes through three different phases. It goes through in the ages that we know about, you know, coming and leading all the way into the Greeks and Romans. And so, it's also shown that they have the hierarchy and the gods and amount of them and everything else, and what's done to worship them and who, how much, and where also changes throughout those times. Egypt Today reports that the Director General of the Dakala Antiquities, Faith al Tawi, is saying that some artifacts dating back to the second transition period, which is the Hyksos period, the mysterious Hyksos people, it's not that mysterious, we've done a few videos about them, who were probably Semitically ruled from around 1640 to 1532 BC, they found four burials related to this area, three of adults and one of a young child. Of course, they haven't looked at that yet and seen, well, is this a Hyksos during that time, or is this just an Egyptian during that time? But that area in the delta is where the Hyksos were definitely had taken over. Well, did all the Egyptians move north out of that area or anything? Not necessarily. And so this doesn't show anything about that till they get to genetics and exactness. The hard thing's going to be is picking out Caucasians from Caucasians. And, uh, you know, until we got genetics going, that was almost an impossible effect. You're saying, well, after we look at all these different skulls, these are a little bit more oblong, and these are a little bit, you know, and uh, the, there's more buck tooth people here, and stuff like that that goes on craniometry. So, look at this uh, gemstone set in here, and it's purple, that regal color of the Phoenicians here, almost scarab shape, but it doesn't have the other things that go along with it. Crimpled and rolled over on the back with the gold, but then on the front of it, has that rimpled edge that looks like roping pretty much done around onto it and a soldering job here at the end. Yeah, it's pretty pretty elaborate. 
personal ornament found in one of the graves, and it's just one of the graves, but I'm guessing because they had been talking about the Hyksos era, this is probably from that intermediate period or second transitional period. In the graves, they uncovered handmade pottery and stone utensils. They also found personal ornaments that were made of semi-precious stones and a number of amulets. Archaeologists also found the remains of foundations of buildings that had been made out of mud brick, some ovens and stoves from the second transitional period. Investigations are ongoing at the site, and it is believed that there are more graves to be found at the location. And they already found, what, 83 of them. And, uh, of course, some of them are up under these houses and stuff, and if they haven't quite finished that off, then they haven't finished off anything. But, uh... So I talked about that hearth and the pits and everything else, too. And I think the problem that we have with Egyptologists is that they don't spit out the information enough. But I think the problem that Egyptologists have had be, is that sometimes they have jumped the gun on the idea that, hey, they had this pre-dynastic giant hearth type situation, like that thing sitting out there. And then after they get the radiocarbon dating finding out that that comes from way later at the Hyksos area, and that's the reason it's not lined up with anything else, and that that doesn't even have anything to do with it. And so one of the things they kind of key pointed and keynoted doesn't actually have to do with it, and so they kind of all lose face. They'd rather do the archaeology and then spit it out and perhaps lose face rather than just start off the bat just winging it. Some of these guys don't even want to peg them to certain dynasties until they get radiocarbon dating and back and things and certain things that just totally verify it, you know. Wish we could watch this video, but that would get flagged real quick. But it talks about a pre-dynastic burial ground found in ancient Egypt. Uh, oh, not that video. That's just uh, Luxor. And uh, all the columns of Luxor and how it looks lit up at nighttime. So, you know, during the day, Egypt looks one way, but at nighttime, it looks cool in another total way. You can imagine in the ancient times when instead of being lit by LEDs and incandescent floodlights up on it, that there would have been torches and brazers with stuff burning them in, in them and flickering firelight lighting them up. Yeah. Maybe the procession leading in here. Probably wouldn't be near that much lighting. Anyhow, you know, that's gorgeous. That royalty colors, too. Man, hmm, that got buried with somebody, huh? But it just, we need to figure out who that got buried with. Here's a couple of more. Mathematics of the Pharaohs, the Rhine Papyrus, and Ancient Egyptian Math. We're about to get all over that. How did the Egyptians bore through granite? We're going to get all over that, too. If it has anything I can add to what we haven't been through already we'll try to do that so here's this neat pottery you know and it goes along with it and stuff but uh, I wish I could just go ahead and do another whole full set where I show you that other pottery they talk about and the pottery specialist lady who's talking about it she's the same one was in the video about the very first zoo that I put out it lasted for a week or two and then all of a sudden oh it flagged for a portion of the video um, but she talks about how, okay, well, she was at this site here, and they found all this pottery, and all of a sudden there's all this shitty pottery, and she finds all this pottery here, and it's real good. And then she's back there talking about the shittery, shitty pottery and how it's not made as well. In fact, you can see where one broke open, and they haven't even really smoothed the inside as well. Of course, it doesn't look like it had a mouth big enough to get your hand back into, but so how do they make the other ones? Because when they crack it, it's smooth on the inside. Do they have little kids or some type of apparatus or paddle that's bent that they stick around in there and make that thing smooth how did these guys do it not that these guys are not so good at pottery and it looks like something from your kids bring home and daddy look an ashtray no it's uh look at these other people and how they were able to do it and the mouth is not big enough to get your hand into right now but here's one that broke open and then yeah look how smooth it is on the inside and then they didn't smooth it after they broke it so interesting, 83 so far burials that are found, and some of them are couples, some of them are twofers, and some are elongated, 
and hook together like there's one there and here's one that looks like a three and here's one that one two three and four or three and then another one and so on and it's all locked into this area here so uh, southeast of Alexandria known as Buto and uh, red ochre burials again found in the people leading to pre-dynastic Egypt and this of course we've made correlations with this would have been the Tufians coming into that area and it looks like by all the circle rings we find and uh, civilization we find in Jordan and the areas there it's just a migratory wave that had run into them at what apparently looks like the right time in history but something inside me tells me that when it happened it was really the wrong time in history and there was being extreme drought and they were driven to rivers to keep alive and to sustain themselves and by doing so they did but people didn't have their crap together but people that knew what the hell to do and how to keep it together unified and formed pre-dynastic Egypt into and heralded actually what we all know today as far as Egypt goes so you can look up Ginger, the pre-dynastic mummy, and see what that looks like. And he's got blonde curly hair and the earliest statues with those blue crystal eyes that I just talked about. Hell, let me just go real quick and we'll do that on the way out. But it's way over here somewhere. Yeah, there's the one on Menez I'm about to do here. Menez Narmer and the idea of the very first and Scorpion King and all that crap. And we'll get into that a little bit. Look at all these different ones I've got pulled up to do. And some of them are two or three per video, but a lot of them are solos. And uh, this goes with this one too, by the way. Here we go. Is it going to go to it? Yeah, because I, I hate it when I do a video and I don't get it to put together. Load, you crap. Hmm. And they've got the same picture, and that's how I recognized it whenever I was looking into it. And uh, also the same pit that's there. And uh, there is a new coffins. Well, oh, this is pretty much word for word. Although, here's some of the other urns, and they have that nipple bot on them and stand up in either rings or holes that you put in the sand, and they stand up off that. Oh, yeah, same, same stuff, right? So let's uh let's just close that so I never see it again and let's try to go man I've got a bunch of stuff pulled up I'm gonna have to get this get on top of it because there keeps being more articles as I try to get caught up on that four months I was behind where are we in now June July is this June, so I'm still only three weeks behind or so, but that's because I've been able to push out more than one video per day on y'all. Tutankhamun's great grandmother, hard to see there, but she's got a little blonde hair and everything to it. But uh, also, la 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 la. Oh my gosh. So here are these crystal blue eyed statues, and these are scribes generally of the earliest of dynasties. Look a little blue gray, get in the right light, aim just right. You know, the eyes follow you around the room, they get bluer at certain angles. There's one here, there's a close up of them, you can see how bluer it looks. And uh, these are the scribes of the earliest of dynasties, and here's somebody we're going to talk about in the other Narmer video is Horaha. And uh, that he also had those crystal blue eyes. And the white that I was talking about before is a granite that they've cut. It's got little pink flecks in it. And by using that and then drilling out here, so having a pocket made behind it, and then sticking the eye in there and then putting the little dot back in it, it gives the effect of a real eyeball. And it's something they only had up until the 12th dynasty, and then they fade and don't have it anymore but even back in the earliest ones whenever they mummified a cat they put these green ones on there not made as well but yeah pretty much does it have a cat eye effect nah no not really when you look at it head on but 
still it's cat ties. So, uh, yeah, pre-dynastic red ochre burials in a whole nother area, and I can't wait for the genetics to hopefully come out in some of these. For that skeleton didn't look like it was in that great of shape. That skull still was, and they have the ability to pull genetics out of teeth and out of the certain bones that are up in the head there, as long as they have that portion still active. Like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy, and we'll get on to the next one. Peace.